Also, we have a winner for the uh, bid war for the music on Shut Up and Slam Guinan. Oops and Dreams, the Undertale soundtrack is in lean. That's what we're going to be doing during the run. reminder we have the major marathon goal at forty thousand dollars or 25 percent of the way there if we hit that we'll upgrade the 16 star run to a 70 star run for a mario 64 near the end of the marathon looks like we're all ready for charles barkley shut up and slam gaiden with ghost king Go ahead. Welcome to the sports ball game of the marathon. My name is Ghost Kumo. Some people still call me Ghost King. That was my old uh, handle. Uh, behind me on the couch is JTB wearing a Anaheim Ducks hat, which kind of makes me ashamed. It might makes me ashamed. So you know, it's appropriate for a uh, basketball game when you're uh, wearing a hockey jersey and a a football beanie from another state. Uh, so, to introduce this game, I often liken this game to AdLib, the RPG. It's, uh... Sorry, I'm hearing just a little bit of echo in the background, and it's kind of distracting me. I'll get used to it. Hey, more Jack Frost. Uh, so, this game uh, is a video game. It doesn't make a lot of sense, and it is very much canon. So, let me go ahead and put this out. Uh, Yes, this is a game that is in the Space Jam canon for some reason. Uh, if you have questions, uh, don't worry, they probably won't be answered. Uh, so we're going to start this off here in a moment. Uh, I will give the signal uh, to go when I say go. Uh, three, two, one, and go. So. This is a game made in Game Maker in about 2008, which I'm going to preface this run by saying some of the jokes in this game have aged very well, and some of them have aged not well. Okay, just making sure I don't accidentally over-menu here. Uh, so the premise of this game is Charles Barkley, Hall of Fame basketball player uh, for the Phoenix Suns, unleashed a chaos dunk, a slam dunk so powerful it blew up New York City. So now we're in Neo New York City with our son, Hoops Barkley, who is not actually the name of Charles Barkley's son. And this game moves at a pretty brisk pace, and by that I mean it moves so fast I can't even explain half the stuff in this game. But essentially all you need to know is this is an RPG with uh, a lot of elements borrowed from like Super Mario RPG. Uh, this is a quick time event section because every game from 2008 needed those. Uh, I'm allowed to take one hit. Uh, so this is Michael Jordan. He's uh, part of the... He's secretly part of the evil cult Blood Moses, but he's trying to get me arrested as the person who unleashed the chaos dunk that caused the uh, extinction of all b-ballers. So basketball is banned in the world of Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam Guide. It's not a very nice place. Uh, also, this is in the year 2050, but Charles Barkley hasn't aged a day since 2008. Don't ask how that works. And in our party, we have a guy by the name of Hellsbane. We're trying very carefully to avoid the encounters here. Uh, stutter stepping, as you see me doing. Uh, I have a foot meter on the bottom when that fill when that empties out. Uh, that was the wrong buy. Uh, uh, okay, I actually have to load. Uh, okay, one sec. Uh, uh, I'm loading a backup save because I bought the wrong thing and I killed the run at the start of the run. That's how you know it's a good run. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, so in our party is uh, the mysterious Hellsbane, who is also the great-grandson of LeBron James, Balthios James. Also, you're going to notice everything in this game may or may not have been taken from another video game, because this is a free-to-play game on Game Maker, and that's just how this works. So now we're releasing the spirit of Le the now-deceased LeBron James, but not before being attacked by a giant b-ball monster. So as you can see, the effects in this game are top of the line, very high-end visual effects. This is bad. 
bad. Ah, he, he had an extra turn there. So, Balthios is the mage. He shoots ice magic with his sword, and that is the most effective strat for most of the run. Nice miss. So that right there is the B-Ball tier. It recovers MP. You can see HP on the bottom right with the red bar and MP with the blue bar. Uh, I need Valthios to be alive at the end of this fight, and I need him to be the one doing the majority of the damage. Okay. Huge shoutouts to the people who've ratted this game, uh, Rivers McCown and Laserlong, who ran the game at AGDQ a long time ago, and that's the first boss. The thing with this game is the... Any percent is really unforgiving. The first five fights can all kill me. So now that we're done with the uh, first boss of the game, we need to go into hiding because Charles Barkley is a wanted man as somebody else unleashed the Chaos Dunk what, yet again, blowing up New York City again. So here in the sewers, we're going to find the cyborg counterpart of Vince Carter, uh, another NBA great. I'm going to buy that. This. Also save with truck pumps that all say, like, really old forum posts from somebody who may or may not be a little bit too into Japanese RPGs. And I got into an encounter by badly dodging this enemy. Should be fine. Hopefully we don't die. So these are just random enemies in the world of Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. The spider made of basketballs and a walking orb with legs. There we go. And this should replenish my sprint meter so I can bypass this enemy here. And there we go. So now we're in a town of what may or may not be uh, TV mascot characters or furries. I don't know. This, this character looks a lot like Jabberjaw. And if you're not getting these references, don't worry. that You might be a little bit too young. So now we're getting the character known as Cyber Dwarf. And Cyber Dwarf is an alien who crash landed on Earth and had a basketball grafted to his face. Uh, I need to sell. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just taking these menus nice and slowly because if I mess them up, I could end up killing the run. And now upcoming is the hardest boss fight of the game. Just double saving here. A lot of bad things can happen. Uh, Vince Carterborg is going to be betraying me, and we're going to fight up against Michael Jordan, who has our son, Hoop Sparkly, hostage. And uh, for Michael Jordan's sprite, they got the wrong Michael. That's all I'm going to say. Also, this is the greatest boss theme ever that may or may not have been taken from uh, Blue Dragon. It's a genuine banger, and anyone who disagrees is wrong. So I really need to get Michael Jordan out of here as fast as possible. Okay, uh, darn. I need to heal Mr. Cyberdwarf. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Come on. Are you kidding me? I might actually end up dying. This is, bad. This is a really bad fight. So Cyber Dwarf has a... Uh, quite the interactive attack option. All the attacks in this game have their own silly little mini-games. And I just got annihilated. So, uh, this is the game over screen. Uh, this is a thing. Rip. Okay, I'll try that again. Yeah, I got about the worst luck possible. I really don't want Michael <clears throat> Jordan to be shooting me with headshots. Also, this game does have a bit of foul language. <laughs> Thankfully, you can hold down the text advance button and it advances text frame perfectly. Even in a 2008 Game Maker game, they still got some of these accessibility functions right, and I like that. Okay. Oh. Okay, darn it. I'm getting really bad luck here. Okay, we'll make it. Ugh, this is 
not good. Okay, one down. Yeah, so steroids bring you back to life because that basketball is banned anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, I have this, and I need to restore Balthius' MP because he does probably the most damage on the team. And Vinceborg has a chance of healing, which is awful. Oh, come on, I need these. Okay. Also, the text files for this song actually do, in fact, say, Jesus Christ, the guy from Deep Purple sang this, and he's not wrong. Blue Dragon is quite the game, I'm just going to say that. Ah, I missed a quick time event. By the way, we have a couple donations for you at time. Uh, go for it. I'm just, I'm just running through the motions. We have a donation from Tiny Tim seventy eight saying, "Hey, all, had to donate for this game." In quotes, Ghost the Runner, who got me into watching speedruns and supporting the community. Thank you, and best of luck with the run. Cheers. Thanks, Tim. We also have five dollars from Keep Paladin saying, "Hiya, folks. Keep Paladin here to wish Ghost Kumo good luck with his run of the most canonical game ever." Donation goes to Ghost Kumo's choice. Yes. This is comment is canon. <laughs> this is, this game is canon. If you don't know what that means, well, okay. So the story behind this game, uh, I definitely recommend watching the GDQ run of this game at AGDQ 2014 to get some context. That was an 100% run. Uh, we're not going to be doing quite that much stuff. I don't need to buy this here. I'm gonna save just because. Uh, so. The developers of this game wanted to make a game with the word Gaiden in it, and they found a Genesis game called Barkley Shut Up and Jam, and they thought it would be really funny to add the word Gaiden to this. And as for the concept of what it's about, essentially what they did was they were reading an old Wikipedia article about Charles Bark or about Michael Jordan and whether or not Space Jam was canon, and they didn't say what it was canon for. So they just decided, yes, Space Jam is canon. And they just went with the idea. Okay, so I need to buy three B-Ball tiers and two steroids. Or two B-Ball tiers and two steroids. Really need steroids. <laughs> uh. This game is completely unabashed in its silliness, and I love it for that. So right now I need to go through the sewers to get to uh, Proto New Neo New York. Fortunately, the guard here charges in a ludicrous sum of money that we do not have, which is 5,000 Neo shekels. Uh, so we need to leave this room and then we're gonna come back and try to fight him. And that is also one of the hardest fights in the run. This is generic bodyguard with generic bodyguard sprite. Also, we have our son, Hoops Barkley, who looks exactly like... I forgot his name, but he's from Streets of Rage 3. So, as we all... As you can probably surmise, uh, the developers of Streets of Rage 3 obviously stole from this game. Despite this game coming out 14 years later. Thankfully, this fight, if anyone dies, it's not a big deal. It gives a negligible amount of experience. Combination is a pretty much one-hit kill move, uh, so really don't want it on Barkley or Balthios, especially not Hoops, because they do the most damage right now. And if you're wondering how they got away with this, well, this game is in fact free to play and download, and it is glorious. Unfortunately, they did try and uh, they did try and like kickstart a sequel, but uh, that has been in limbo for a very long time. So hopefully that comes out one day. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, goat is good. Okay, one more hit should kill. There we go. That is the second to last actually hard fight in this game done. Thankfully, I've only died once. So he's going to let us through, and we're going to go into the old town of Proto Neo New York. I would have deliberately missed all of these quick time events because, yeah, 
it's slightly faster to do so. So now that we are in Proto Neo New York, we need to accept a quest to advance the plot of the game. I stay at the motel here to heal. Shout out to Motel 6. And then we're going to accept a quest to uh, deal with a monster by the name of Ghost Dad, who is probably the worst aged reference in this game. It is from a obscure, by now, movie from the 1980s, starring a particular actor who you may recognize. By the way, that was Juana Man. Yes, that was Juana Man. So this is Ghost Dad. He is awful. And can give me status effects such as glaucoma, Parkinson's, diabetes, and Montezuma's revenge. Combat strategies will get changed here soon enough, so if you're seeing me doing a lot of the same things, don't worry, that changes up. The timing for punch, 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 kick there is a little tight, but it is the optimal amount of damage. Oh no, Barkley got spooked. Okay. Hope all, I hope everyone here is having a good time. Y'all having a good time? Thank you. Let's go, Cali Fun. By the way, we have another donation. Go for it. We have uh, twenty dollars from Laser Long saying, "Hey, Ghost, you're killing it, and I'm really glad I was able to catch your run. Keep on jamming, and I'm really happy to see speedruns in this game. Stay based and much love." Yeah, thanks, Laz. So thankfully, Ghostad has not done his worst thing, which is just give my party members six random status effects. Probably should have healed Bar uh, Poop's MP. Uh, Sobbers. Okay, I'm all out. That was a mistake. <laughs> and rip Cyberdorf. Okay, we're gonna bring him back. Oh, I... Well, I guess that's a needle. This menu in here. Lovely. Okay. This is the greatest fog effect I've ever seen in a game. Alright. There we go, that's the one we don't want to see. Thankfully, Barkley got hit with nothing really of note, so we should be able to finish this fight just fine. Darn it. Ah, I should have healed. Mm, let's chance it. Darn it. Ooh, this is going bad. Right at the end, too. Well, my Montezuma's Revenge is cured. Come on. Hit it once. Okay, I'm just gonna try the... Oh. Or just die. Well, rip again. <laughs> yeah, my PB in this game is about a 39. I have like 10 minutes of buffer, so we're good. After this part, it gets relatively smooth. So. Oops. Well, I canceled the quest thinking that I saved before I took the quest. So you get this glorious uh, text art that they spent a lot of time on very clearly. Yeah, I'm going into this fight a little under-resourced. Wouldn't be a marathon run of this game if it didn't go, you know, terribly. As this game has kind of had a bit of a history of deaths. <laughs> By the way, we got another donation. Go for it. We have a hundred bucks from Epikai saying, Hee ho! Do the thing. Ghost choice. By the way, what's your choice? Uh, get back to me on that in a second. Okay. 
So the one that's really bad of the bunch here is, uh... Okay, I need tobacco. Is Parkinson's. That one, that one gets rid of my damage pretty badly. This is bad because his speed is really high and he... He'll attack like three times before Cyberdwarf gets an attack, so even though Cyberdwarf's the only one who can consistently do damage without, uh... Consistently do damage at this point in the game without using MP, it's still, uh... shaky at best. Okay, I'm gonna use... I don't want to use that yet. Although my damage is lower, it's not as bad as if, uh, Barkley had Parkinson's. So like I said, everything in this game is very ad libsy. Uh, doesn't make much sense if you try and explain it to somebody out of context. And even then with context, it's uh, tenuous at best. Okay. Skip turn order. Uh, use that. Barkley, no. Okay. Another donation. Twenty-seven dollars from Bash Prime, saying this is quite possibly the greatest RPG ever made, and frankly, he's right. Not wrong. It is an RPG that somebody could call one of the greatest RPGs of all time. That is a theoretically possible statement. Oh no. What is going wrong here so much? Once we get past this, this is supposed to. <laughs> it's hard to keep a straight face with this game. Okay. Okay. As he continues to lower my speed to the point it can't be lowered anymore. I'm low, I was low on money going into this, so I was like low on B ball tiers. And those are the thing to replenish MP. Rip. Double miss? Wow, I am getting the business. Close to death. Come on, dude. Come on, Cyber Dwarf. Okay, we're dead. Uh, this is bad. Mm, sorry about this, guys. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Not a good start. Uh, slide. by this guy before, but never this bad. Uh, okay. Okay. 
Uh, Teddy, if you want to go ahead and rattle off any plugs or terminations, I'm going through the motions again, so go ahead. And feel free to just take up sp space right now. I'm just, I'm just dealing with this. Just a reminder, we have a 70-star uh, Mario 64 run if we hit the 40k mark sometime in, in the end of the marathon. Keep those donations coming, everybody. Every little bit counts. Also, so far, You Got a Friend in Me is not going to be sung for, or performed on violin, possibly, during the uh, Kingdom Hearts run. Make that one happen. Uh, by the way, what was your choice for incentives? There's been a couple donations asking for that. Actually, pretty much every donation we've had this run. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, guys. Uh, um, I'll get back to you on that. Um, Want to hear some options? Or? Sure. Favorite Disney song? Uh, you know what? Uh, you got a friend in me. Let's go with that one. So we got a new first place then. That would just hit once. We'd be probably done. Sparkly never was a very clutch shooter. Okay, this should do it. And... Dead. Freaking finally, dude. Okay. Okay, so the run gets significantly easier from here, because pretty soon we're going to get access to the most broken item in the game. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, seizure warning, by the way. Uh, also, rip bitrate, probably. Given warning. <laughs> Ain't no kill like overkill. Alrighty. Uh, Teddy, do you know that you want a man reference? Like, it's one of the few in this game I don't get. Yeah, there's a movie called Juana Man. Guy uh, decided to join the WNBA and kind of worked for a while. Then he regretted it. Uh, that's really stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's a really dumb movie. <laughs> The guy was like a B character in all these horror movies before that movie, but that was like his big break or something. <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> that is a thing. He was like the damn enchiladas guy from uh, one of the Jason movies. Oh. Uh. So I've never seen Juana Man? Classic. All right, so I've been so focused on that last little part. So the next objective here is we need to go to the old Spalding Basketball Factory. If you're familiar with the Spalding brand, they are the ones who make probably most of the basketballs you see. So this place is like future cyberpunk e kind of place. You need to be careful of enemy movement cycles here. Oh god, uh, I'm gonna reset the room. I'm really supposed to do this. Oh, what? Okay, well, got a little cheeky there, but that works as well. So we need to find three keys. A red key, a blue key, and a uh, green key. Thankfully, this game has inconsistent, but existent cutscene skips. So first, uh, well, I got a first strike there. I was holding down by mistake. Should be able to escape pretty quickly. There we go. So the thing that sucks about this game is if you accidentally get into an encounter, you have to like basically leave the screen before enemy aggro is gone. So we're going to set off this lift here. We need to get one more lift key on the right side here. Wait for this enemy cycle through here. And in the trash can, we're going to find, uh, in the next room, we're going to find a very, very useful item in that I can sell it for a lot of money. Uh, Moved bad, and uh, I would have aggroed that enemy there. I really don't want. Enemies waste time. Okay. 
There's this guy here named Leonard. I keep finding him throughout the place. Uh, he's actually a ghost. We need to set his spirit free. Uh, this is the Square Enix Goya representative. So I gave him a gun that I found in the factory, and he gave me 2,500 Neo Shekels, which is really useful because we get access to the greatest trademark item ever, the chicken fry. One of these would be good. And we'll save the lift. Barkley says he's done with lifts. The thing that I enjoy about this game is uh, <laughs> they really capture the spirit of who Charles Barkley is, which is sort of a no-nonsense kind of guy. If nothing else, he's a genuinely entertaining guy, even if he hates on my warriors a lot. Alright, so here we're going to fight a man by the name of Scott Creelman, who at the time of this game's creation was the CEO of Spalding. Uh, he has passed away, unfortunately, like in 2011. Uh, and they just grab some random gym teacher sprite. Okay, this attack's good. Hopefully Ghost Dad gave me the Ghost Muscle ability, which lets me buff myself. Ouch. Uh, I didn't want to use this now, but I have to. The one I really want, the one I really don't have to worry about is Hoops. He's gonna leave my party after this fight, and yeah. Sorry, but what was that thing you just did? Do I, do I look like the person asking for these questions? <laughs> You're running the game, come on. <laughs> Have you not seen this game before? <laughs> there are things no man was meant to understand about this game. That is probably one of them. Alright. By the way, what was the name of the guy that made this game? Uh, it's a guy by the name... There are two guys, actually. Chef Boyardee is the handle of one of them. Uh, and Bort, who is the... I believe it was the same guy as the global Twitch emote that used to be on Twitch for a while. Alright, so here we're celebrating our victory for an extended period of time because my characters are ridiculously underleveled from having been dead from the last couple of boss fights. And the you can hear the victory theme <laughs> loop. They didn't put. They didn't intend for this to last this long. So I love Balthios's animation. Gregor told me the name of the game it's from, and I don't know what it was. Anyway, so the story is Michael Jordan injects a syringe of diabetes into our son, like a severe kind, the one that they were never able to cure because it's the future. So we need to go find the one who can cure our diabetes. And if you're wondering if diabetes is something that you can, in fact, give somebody, not really. So, there are two paths you can take, a boat and the Underground Railroad. This is the faster of the two. Uh, but of course there's a terrorist attack on the... Oh, that's bad. Uh, I can miss this once. Uh... careful here because I can uh, miss this one. Ordinarily I just hold, uh, I would hold down the button and just make a mistake there, but since I mi made a mistake earlier, I have to make sure I time it correctly because if I'm holding down uh, the text advance key, it considers that holding down that button and then I fail the quick time event. So there's a bomb on the back car of this train which we need to decouple the links. Thankfully I only have to hold down the confirm button because the correct answer is no to all three. All right, so now we're off the train and we are on the island of L-I-B-E-R-T-Y. So this place is like a parody of old RPGs. Uh, everything you have to do like is prompted. Uh, so this is the Statue of Liberty. Uh, you might notice a couple of differences about it, but it should be pretty unnoticeable. 
unless you have a really trained eye. Unfortunately, we cannot progress here, so... Uh, need to talk to this guy to get his pipe. And we're looking for a man by the name of Yelmerb. Uh, who is believed to be the one who can cure our diabetes. So, for whatever reason, you have to ask this guy's permission to take the pipe here. And then we're going to use the rock that we picked up and the pipe to uh, move this boulder, which I guess is sort of a jab at how esoteric a lot of old RPGs could be about their uh, context sensitivity. This guy gives me a key, but he wants me to kill the other guy. Uh, that said, we're going to go try and find him, and he's nowhere to be found. And they're going to lock us in and try and just flood the room with sugar. You know, a diabetic's worst nightmare, apparently. to get the screwdriver out of here. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Use... I keep messing the menu with bad. Okay, the bookcase, and it gives me a passcode. So that's one, two, three, two. Now we can get out. Yep. Whoops. This is not very intuitive. <laughs> like, this, this scheme here is really not good. So I'm going to go here to examine the dead guy, and he's going to give me a third ability for our friend Cyberdwarf called Shaft Grenade. Save here, and get ourselves another chicken fry, because we really want those. I am like completely missing out my plot triggers here. Uh, need to go talk to this guy first. Sorry, it's it's been late and I've not been running on a lot of sleep. Yeah. Okay. Need to go talk to this guy. Give me some money. And he's gonna give us a sugar counter, which is like a Geiger counter, only for something a little bit more mundane. So we need to be careful and on the lookout here for the diabetes, and we need to steer clear of any areas of sugar because that's how diabetes works. By the way, someone in chat asked if there was a stolen asset in this game. Uh, yes, every asset from this game was stolen by other games. Unbelievable. Now, how could they do that? Up here. <laughs> It's the greatest jump scare of all time. So we think this is the diabetes, the diabeste, but it is actually just a man named Reginald. I don't know what his deal is. Not the bees! Okay. Uh, let's use that. Here we're gonna use Showboat Jam. Take a dunk on this guy. This is Cyberdwarf's ability. It's uh, Chaff Grenade. It has a chance of debuffing the enemy with a random debuff. Sometimes you get de you get reduced guard, and that's really nice. I do not need to use a double team that does not do damage to this guy. Our strategies are finally changing up a little bit. And that's Reginald. As you can see, the game has gotten significantly easier. <sighs> Probably still going to be a little overestimate. My apologies. I got pretty shafted. All right. So this is the Diabeasty. Tell they put a lot of effort into it.
Now we all have diabetes. Which is sort of like poison, if you're familiar with other RPG status effects. Just takes away my health over time. By the way, just a reminder, we have some showcases coming up later in the marathon that we have plenty of time to reach. I don't know about you, but I like more marathon than less marathon, so let's donate to get those. I forgot actually what happens here in the story. <laughs> okay, so now we get to go finally meet the man known as... Oh god, I forgot that's a thing. Uh, I need to cure my diabetes first. So we're going to cure that with good old-fashioned Burger King. So this is Yelmir, which if uh, you look into the name, it spells Brimley backwards. So this is Wilford Brimley, the man from the old diabetes testing supplies commercials. He is the one who has taken on the world's diabetes, and he will cure our son. But of course we need an obligatory boss fight before everything. So we're meeting our good old friend Vince Carterborg, and a redux of this Janin song. Uh, so gonna... Actually, debuff him now that we have that ability. Gonna buff ourselves. Use our time tested strategy of just spamming ice magic. Showboat here. I'm usually faster on these menus. The problem is, at this point, things have gone so badly. I just want to make sure I'm not making any any terribly bad mistakes. I believe there are people out there who don't like the song. <laughs> I, get into, I get into discussion with people about great and bad RPG boss themes, and every now and then this one comes up. Just a quick reminder, this song is bread. Is what? It's bread, dude. Bread. Uh, sure, that's that. Let's go with that. That is an adjective that could be used to describe this song. Alright, this should finish. Our good pal, Vince. Alrighty. Now he bids us farewell. And our son is healed, but uh, at great cost. So press F in chat to pay respects. Good man. Alright, so our next destination is the tomb of Kuchulin. I don't know, or Kuchulain, I don't know. I think it's something in between those two. I don't know, I don't know Irish. But yeah, it's just your obligatory ancient tomb dungeon in an RPG. And this one really is meant to test our party. As our party splits up here uh, in a moment. Got about this first screen. Thankfully, there's a thing here that heals us, so I don't have to use any more chicken fries right now. I want to save as many of those as I can for the final fight. And yes, it is optimal to be stutter-stepping like this. Okay. 
really don't want that rat noticing me, because enemy aggro sticks with me until I leave the room. I do like RPGs that don't have random encounter. They don't care for when you can't get rid of them. Okay. I need to hit these four statues to progress. And then this is the trickiest enemy dodge in, probably in the run. Okay, that's good. Uh, now we've hit all four switches. Go to this chest for two chicken fries. And we should be able to move on. And now our party is going to be split up, and each one is going to be tempted with their greatest desire. And, of course, you know, this being an RPG, none of them are going to take it, except... Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Thunder. Now we can do the Thunder Strike here, which hits five times instead of three. May or may not be a reference that Robocop stole. This might be uh, familiar. Uh, original character, do not steal. Okay. Poke. This also may be an original character, completely original. Uh, I think we just use ice and attack this one. Yeah. Yeah. This is a pretty simple fight. Greatest attack animation of all time. The best part is when he does an attack called Rebel Yell, which I, I think one of the developers just yelled in a mic. Alright, so Cyber Dwarf, on the other hand, gets tempted with a bucket of sand. He has a puzzle that he has to... Oh. If, he, if he falls in, he will get warped back to the center, and it's kind of really hard to do blind. So, this is a little janky here. Uh, I took the wrong path. It's like here. Okay, and then the rest of this, I already know, because I can just walk along the wall. That was the toughest puzzle I've ever seen. Okay. Here's just a maze. It's left, up, left, right. You got a moment for donations or anything, go ahead. Just a reminder, we have a couple signed copies of a couple video games from the voice actors. We have a signed copy of Destiny 2 and a signed copy of Poyo Poyo Tetris. Either one for a single donation of $10. Uh. Also, if you too want to play Charles Barkley Shop and Slam Gaiden like a pro, we have a couple of fight sticks available for a $30 donation. <laughs> a fight stick. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so Charles Barkley was the only one who was who took what he was tempta tempted with, which was literally just mine gold. Not making this up. Like a family man who lost his wife years ago in the purge of the bee ballers. Also, now we have a better basketball, which double team hits twice every attack with. Uh, so, Parkinson's choppy. And so that's us defeating our inner evil and gaining the power of the bee baller. So we're coming up on estimate here. We're going to go a bit over that, uh, but we're going to be coming up on the last dungeon here. Yeah. There's a whole lot of sections of this game I haven't even covered because it's just really not enough time to. So I definitely encourage you to play this game. The writing in this game is just all over the place and great. Some of the jokes were very 2008, but it is free to play. And I do actually think as an RPG it is 
confident. Unfortunately... So this game used to be really buggy and tended to crash a lot. They fixed that on some of their more recent releases. However, this overworld section is naggingly slow. I think this is sort of like a reference to towards the end of Earthbound. There's all sorts of just great RPG references in this game. Uh, but we're coming up on Cyber Dwarf ship and we need to head back into space because what RPG wouldn't end in space? So it is here we are going to finally have the final battle with Vince Carter Borg, Michael Jordan, uh, the Monstars from Space Jam, and maybe another boss all to himself. That Vince Carter Borg self-destructed. Press F to pay respects. Good heal here. I don't think I need to save. Come on. All the truck pumps say, like, really just... Imagine, like, the comic guy from Simpsons saying really uh, nerdy things about JRPGs, and that's pretty much what you get in that wall of text you see before every, uh, every save point. So here's the final battle with Michael Jordan. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle set to the greatest basketball tune of all time. Love me some sweet Georgia Brown. takes three hits to kill. All right, now we got the final boss, and this is what you donated for. The first version has the slam jam, the first fight of the final boss has this first phase of slam jam, and then the second version has like just a regular final boss theme. All the game's sound files are basically MP3s, so they're really easy to swap out. So now we face the truly greatest evil, ourselves. I don't think I need to really explain the one-winged angel here, but... <laughs> So the key to this fight actually is to make sure that I never lose more than two characters, or never lose more than one character. I need at least two alive before uh, the next phase, because the final phase of this fight is a doozy. And yes, all those balls are hitting twice. So, Charles Barkley is the strongest one in my party right now. Okay, I'm gonna just pop this, get rid of all my status effects. Alright, so far so good. All right, so this should be the end of the first phase, and then we have the second phase, which is our dark self's inner true form. Brace yourself. Shout out to Undertale. There's a great website out there that has all the Slam Jam remixes out there called Come On and SL.AM. This song is a banger, I couldn't resist. Thank you all for donating for that, by the way.
time is going to come up when his health bar depletes, so that's going to be soon enough. But I, no, I hate to ask for a little bit more of your time, but the ending cutscene of this game is 100% worth it. So, look forward to that. Alright. Thankfully he hasn't buffed himself. That's really the key to whether this fight goes well or not. Should be two more hits, and then that would be time. Uh, might be three. I'll uh, call it. One more. Ah, oh, he heals. What a jerk. And... Nope. All right. Time. Thank you all so much. I apologize for that. Uh, Ghost Dad gave me the business. Uh, worse than I've ever seen. I could say that's never happened to me but happened before. All right, so Balthios, <laughs> Balthios takes on the uh, Monstars as Hoops Barkley and Cyber Dwarf escape. Kind of, this is meant to be the sequel hook, but Barkley needs to deal with his inner demon the one way he knows how. I just hope this game doesn't crash during this cut. And that was Barkley Shut Up and Jam Guiden, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. This is where the credits would roll and you'd unlock Victorian Steampunk mode. Uh, this game is free to play. I hope the sequel comes out. Yes, there is a typo in the, in the, um, in the team's name that's intended. Uh, Shoutouts to Bort, Chef Boyardee, and GZ for this game. Shoutouts to Nobuo Uematsu, the only non-Chef Boyardee composer of this game because they did take one song technically from Blue Dragon. All right, I am Ghost Kumo. Uh, I run this game from time to time, run a lot of other RPGs. Uh, I'll be around the marathon. Uh, definitely stick definitely stick around, stay tuned. We got a couple more silly games. Also, Larry Bird was in this game, if you're familiar with the, who that is. Uh, he died very early on in the story. Uh, next, we got a Bobo's, a Bobo's Big Adventure. And got plenty more great games uh, for the rest of the marathon. So continue, please continue your support, continue watching, continue donating. This cause means a lot to me personally. Having you know seen, having seen what causes like direct relief do for uh, you know third world countries that don't exactly have access to even some of the basic medical and uh, response measures that we do here. So I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Thank you all for watching.